So in this uh, slightly more complicated problem, we have again block 1 and block 2 connected by a string, but notice that instead of one pulley, we have two pulleys. So what we're looking to find here is a constraint equation between the acceleration of block 1 and the acceleration of block 2. How are they connected? What kind of function is A1 of A2? Notice that we have a movable pulley here and a fixed pulley. In the previous problem, we only had one fixed pulley. In this one, we have added a second movable pulley, which is connected directly attached to M2. The pulley and the connecting rod and M2 can be considered a single system that accelerates with an acceleration A2. So as we did before, let's uh, look at the position of the blocks at two different times. Let's say that at t equals zero, they are at those locations. Sometime later, say one second later, the block M1 has moved to the right a distance delta S1. Block 2 has moved down a distance delta S2. The question is, how are those distances related? Once again, the horizontal part of the string lost an amount delta S1 during that time it must equal the amount that the vertical part of the string gained during that same amount of time which is clearly 2 times delta S2 if that's how the distances are related we immediately obtain that the velocity of block 1 should be 2 times the velocity of block 2 and taking the derivative we arrive at A1 equals 2 times A2 so block 1, the horizontal one, accelerates at a rate that is 2 times the acceleration of block 2. One more time, we have a plus or a minus sign that we need to use depending on how we want to define the coordinate axis for M2 and M1. I will show you which sign you have to pick by solving the problem for the accelerations A1 and A2. So let's do that. Let's try to find how much is A1 and how much is A2. We know how they are related. We know that the magnitude of A1 is going to be two times the magnitude of A2. We already know that, but we don't know what value in terms of M1 and M2. So as usual, let's start by uh, drawing the forces acting on the different parts of the system. So we have the tension of the rope acting on M1, we have the weight of M1, and we have the normal force acting on M1. These are all the forces acting on M1. For the second system, we're going to pick, as I said before, M2, the connecting rod or string, and the movable pulley. This is what I, what's going to constitute our object of interest. So for that object of interest, we need to see what are the forces, what are the objects that are in contact with our object of interest. So we do a free body diagram. And in this free body diagram, we're going to uh, choose the x-axis to be positive to the right and the y-axis to be positive upwards. This choice is going to determine the sign in the constraint equation, as I'll show you. So for now, let's just see what objects are in contact with the object of interest. Well, there is a force of gravity, of course, that does not depend on contact. And then the contact force between the string and the object of interest. But notice that the string is in contact with the object of interest at two different points. At each one of those points the tension in the string is the same and at each one of those points there will be a force acting on the object of interest by each one of the segments of the string. So we have two tensions going up. So let's move those two vectors uh, to the free body diagram. So let's write the equations of motion. For M1, from the free body diagram, we get that the tension, the only force acting to the right, should be equal to the mass of that block multiplied by its acceleration. In the y direction, we have that the normal should be equal to the weight of the block. For M2, in the x direction, we have zero forces acting in the x-direction equals zero acceleration in the x-direction. Not a very interesting equation. In the y-direction we have 2t 
acting upward so positive minus the weight of the block and that should be equal to m2 times its acceleration so we have two equations so far and how many unknowns do we have well the tension is not known we don't know the acceleration of block one and we don't know the acceleration of block two so we have more unknowns than equations so we need to find an additional equation to be able to solve for these variables the additional equation is clearly the constraint equation a1 should be equal to minus 2 times a2 now why did we pick the minus sign? that's something to watch out if you forget this you will get the wrong answer so why minus sign? well that has to do with the fact that our free body diagram for block 2 has the positive y-axis going upwards and the free body diagram for block M1 has the positive axis uh, being to the right so that means that let's say that you have that block 1 has an acceleration of 1 meter per second square positive meaning to the right if block 1 is moving to the right block 2 is going to have to move downwards but since we said that upwards is positive the acceleration of block 2 is going to be have to be half of a1 in magnitude but we need to put in a minus sign to indicate that if block 1 moves to the right block 2 must be moving downwards the acceleration of block 2 in this case would be minus 0 0.5 meters per second square so remember that once you pick your coordinate axis once you determine which one is the positive y and which one's the negative y and the same for the x you need to stick to that convention every vector in your equations that points in the positive uh, coordinate axis direction is going to have to go in the equation with a plus sign and every vector that goes in the negative direction needs to be plugged in the equations in Newton's second law with a minus sign so the equation, the constraint equation as I, as I said should be a1 equals minus 2 a2 so now we have three equations and three unknowns the tension, acceleration 1 and acceleration 2 so we can solve the system so let's write the equations more clearly here we have first equation is that the tension should be equal to m1 a1 so that came from the free body diagram for m1 the second equation is 2 times the tension minus m2g should be equal to m2a2 that came from the free body diagram for block 2 and the third equation is the constraint equation a1 equals minus 2a2 so how do we solve these equations one thing that we can do is use the tension from equation 1 and replace it in equation 2 the tension is m1a1 so instead of writing t we're gonna write m1a1 the next step would be to use the acceleration from equation 3 a1 and plug it in equation 2 in terms of a2 so a1 is minus 2 a2 so we can write that there so we get in equation 2 2 m1 times a1 but a1 is minus 2 a2 the second term is minus m2 g should be equal to m2 a2 so now we have our equation only in terms of a2 solving for a2 gives us finally that the acceleration of block 2 is minus m2 divided by m2 plus 4 m1 times g notice that we got a minus sign there which is important because we do know that block 2 is moving downwards so the acceleration because we picked the positive y-axis upwards must be negative another check that we could perform on our uh, final answer for a2 is to see if whether it makes sense for m1 equals 0 what do we get? we get that the acceleration 2 is equal to minus g which clearly makes sense if block 1 has no mass it's not even there so there's nothing to slow down the downwards motion of m2 which should be free fall another check would be to replace m2 equals 0 if m2 has a mass equal to 0 
and knowing that the pulley has zero mass and the string has zero mass, then clearly there is no reason why M1 would move to the right. Nothing is pulling on M1. So the acceleration should be clearly zero. So our final uh, answer for the acceleration in terms of M1, M2 and G seems to make sense. Now in A2, we can replace in equation number 3 to get A1. So we get A1 equals minus 2 times A2. So the minus with the minus cancels. And A1 is 2M2 divided by M2 plus 4M1G.